All right, welcome back to one of the hottest shows you have here on the YouTube. This is places called The Dating Den, where Christian Anderson and Marnie Batista all get down to business to talk about some of the hottest topics in the dating world. Absolutely. This one is about Fifty Shades of Grey, and what we're going to be talking about Fifty Shades of Grey is that in Fifty Shades of Grey, there is a guy, Christian. Not him. Not this one. Who is also not Christian Carter, by the way, in case you were confused. <laughs> yeah, not, not Christian Carter. Christian Anderson. But Christian in this Christian Grey Christian Gray, Gray is right? a little bit of a broken individual. Yes. Quote, unquote, so you might call him a bad boy. Yes. Um, and a woman who has this uh, addiction or fascinating relationship right? with him that's hard for her to get away from. We want to talk about that topic because the bad boy is a very stimulating uh, oh, yeah. guy to be around. There's a nice roller coaster ride that mm. happens. It's it's to the point where good it guys hurts so good. Hurts <laughs> so good to the point where good guys seem boring and dull, and you don't even want them. Yes. Let's talk about okay. That. So first of all, so okay, yeah. yes, it's mommy porn and blah blah blah. Quite frankly, I was sort of just mom, mom, calling porn. it mommy porn. I quite frankly, this we don't even need to talk about that. <laughs> whatever, tickle me with a feather, but. Um, um, so it's a great example. So here's Christian Grey. He's like successful. He's like sexy. He's hot. He's smart. Um, and he can't, let's not even talk about the, the sex stuff. He says he's not capable of a relationship, a real relationship. He, he says, I've had these issues in my past. Great. She has other men in her life who are really nice guys mm. who love her. But this is just not interesting. Jose is not doing it for her. Jose can't okay. say no. <laughs> he can't say no. So, number one, in the end of the first book, you know, if you haven't read it, she has to make a decision about, do I stay with the guy who's not good for me? Mm -hmm. So, when we talk about this, how do you know when you should just say it's enough? One thing to do is that we got two things going on at that point. You got your heart that's saying a lot of stuff, and you got your head. Okay, and right now, usually with the bad boy stuff, you got a lot of emotional reasoning. Your heart's just going off with all those mm -hmm. emotions, and it's getting all these great chemicals because the bad boy is giving you all this great stimulation. You're gonna have to get up here for a second, as much as you can, and maybe Absolutely. write out a, a little resume of how does this relationship looking on paper, and maybe you can start to get a little further into your head about let me process this to know. Is this what yeah. I'm getting matching up to my own value, my own self-worth, yes. what I really want in a relationship, yeah. what I'm really looking for, what I want it to look what like. I really want to look like? Does is it? Let me read the story. Okay, right. he shows up sometimes. Um, he's drunk and belligerent, uh, but we have really good sex. Um, sometimes it's really great. Um, I'm not sure to bring around my parents. I mean, these are things where sometimes it can help you be your own best friend to be like. Okay, this can is not I good. can I make it even more challenging? Let's do that. Because this is because this is really important in this story. And I, I want to up the game because this guy is really good with his her okay. parents. All right. He is really good on paper. He doesn't, he's not obviously, you know, a drunk. He has no problems in that. So he looks good on paper. Ah, okay. The plot thickens. Right. The plot thickens. And I think this is where it comes to he's the best guy you've ever dated. He's better mm. than anyone you've ever dated. Mm. If you do the paper thing, sometimes it's really hard because there's so many good things about him. Okay. But we go back to that bottom line is, is this relationship taking energy for me or is it adding energy to my life? Mm. And if you find that you are looking at your phone, if you're compromising your values, in the book she calls it her inner goddess. Mm -hmm. She's always battling with her authentic self, her I am, her truth. And and at the end, there's this piece of you, and you and I were talking about this, where the whisper, you know that like, this isn't good, this isn't good. The whisper starts to get louder and louder and it damages your self-esteem and it damages mm -hmm. your self-worth until it becomes like a scream. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things blow up. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so you have to really look at is this ultimately doing damage to my self worth and can he give me what mm -hmm. I want because I'm telling you I'm giving you permission we both are you get to have great expectations for for what you want in a relationship good mm -hmm. enough doesn't have to be what you get yeah and that, that was a monologue it was a great monologue though <laughs> I, the room got a little still there i feel i feel passionate about it because i see so yeah. many great women right. really struggling with this well you bring up a, a great this great idea of this good enough thing so when you're saying when a woman's like yes but he's better than all the other guys i've gotten you're still saying however you're that's fine but you're looking for something even more and even greater that really messes your values and if it's yes. not that you're saying Pull away because here's, and I talk to actually dating coach where, you know, we have a little crew and we talk about this stuff and we all have the same thing. The universe will test you 
And it will say, are you really settling for good enough? Mm -hmm. And we find, and I find, and the clients, the people who say no, even though it's like the hardest thing they've ever done, they're telling the universe, I am waiting, I am calling in greatness. And when you can say no, I always tell people, what we want you to do is learn when to say no and when to say yes. Mm -hmm. And when you say no, you open yourself up for this amazing, yes. I had a client actually this weekend, I just remember this. She got engaged to her yes, Mm -hmm. and she came to me because she was basically dating a version of Christian Grey without the sex. He was so amazing. He was so (laughs) great. Like, they had great sex. I don't know what they're really doing, but she was attractive. You know, she was over Uh 40. She'd waited her whole life, Uh and she was dying. Like, she couldn't break up with him, and I really helped her to say no. And literally, two months later, she met this guy, and they just got engaged. Sure. Stay committed to your core values. Yep. Know how much you're worth. Yes. And and th- th- this gets back to a little bit of the crumbs thing. But you're yes. saying sometimes it doesn't appear to be crumbs. It, sometimes it doesn't appear to be crumbs. Sometimes it's um, gluten-free cake. <laughs> Chewing that one for a while. We'll see you at Whole Foods Jeez. at the gluten-free cake. And uh, this has been The Dating Den. <laughs> see ya.